You know where you can get the best chicken tortilla soup? In your kitchen at your house. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. If this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a big thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button to make sure you never miss a video. Now, let's start cooking. That's right, it is as simple as it can possibly be. And the most delicious soup is made just by using what you've got at home. So our chicken tortilla soup today, I've got some boneless, skinless, I've got a couple of breasts of chicken here and I've got a couple of thighs because I like to kind of mix it up a little bit. So we've, we're starting with, with the boneless chicken, boneless and skinless chicken. Then we've got some onions, some garlic, some jalapenos. And one thing that's not used so often is the stems of the cilantro. And uh, we're gonna use the leaves of the cilantro later, but right now we've got the stems of the cilantro and we're gonna use that in our mix. Now, if you're one of those people who has the gene that just can't stand cilantro, just leave it out, it's no problem. But I love the taste of it and uh, that's gonna go into our soup mix. And then we've got a little bit of tomato paste concentrate and this is the good stuff, the stuff that comes in the tube. It has a lot more strength, I think, than the, than the canned uh, uh, tomato paste. So we're just gonna use a couple of tablespoons of that. Then we've got some crushed tomatoes from the can. And then we've got some chicken stock that we're gonna use in our, in our soup and a couple of spices. And everything else here is for garnish. We've got some fresh tomatoes that I've cut up, just some romas that I've diced. We've got some uh, cilantro leaves. We've got some uh, lemons. Anytime I'm making Mexican food, um, I always have some fresh, uh, and I said lemons, limes, some fresh limes on hand, just because you might need that to add that little bit of acid at the end. And then we've got some avocado, and we won't, we won't cut that up until the very end because it's actually gonna be for garnish. And then we'll finish with a little bit of cheese. I've got a mixture of uh, grated uh, white cheddar and uh, yellow cheddar cheese. And then we're gonna actually make our own tortilla strips from some tortillas. And we've got some spices here. And those are basically our ingredients. Let's get going. So like I said, for this chicken, we're using boneless, skinless, breast and thighs. And you know, when, when you marinate something, if you've got time, I like to let, let it marinate overnight. I mean, there's no, no reason not to. So I've actually done that. And I've literally just, uh, uh, season this chicken with a little bit of salt and pepper and then I've used some uh, ground cumin and some chili powder. You could add some smoked paprika, what have you, what, whatever you want, really whatever your spice level uh, is for, for yourself. Now the one thing that we are going to do is we are going to sear, we're going to sear our chicken breast or our chicken and, but we're just going to partially cook it. We're not gonna cook it all the way. So we're just gonna put a little bit of grapeseed oil. You could use walnut oil, you could use vegetable oil, what, what have you. But what we're gonna do, because we wanna cook this chicken pretty quickly, and they're fairly, fairly thick breasts of chicken. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pound them, and that will also serve to tenderize them a little bit. So only for the only for the breast that we need to do that because the rest of these pieces are, are pretty small or pretty thin. All right, so to, to tenderize and thin our chicken, we're gonna use this meat tenderizer, but you could also just use the blade. If you've got a cleaver, you could use a blade, the blade of the cleaver to do that as well. But um, I think the job just goes faster with the tenderizer. So we're gonna do that just a little bit. And we're just really trying to get them a little bit thinner. so that they cook a little bit faster in their even size all over. All right, so that's it for our chicken. And once our oil is, is heated up, we'll be uh, putting our chicken in there and we'll go from there. Okay, to get started, we are gonna sear our chicken. And now I've washed my hands thoroughly. Anytime you are 
working with raw chicken, you want to make sure you wash your hands thoroughly after, after handling it. Our skillet is uh, nice and hot, so we're going to put our chicken in and just get those nice and seared. I'll go ahead and turn the heat back up because we want to we want to cook this fairly quickly. We don't want to leave it in here forever. So we'll let our chicken cook until it's nice and browned, and then we'll go to the next step. So as your chicken browns uh, on either side, just go ahead and turn it over, and we will brown the other side. And when this chicken finishes browning, we're actually just going to put it right back in. We, we've washed this. But we're going to put it back in this in this pot. We're not going to drain it. We actually want to keep all of the juices that are being created from from searing this chicken. So our chicken has cooked on each side really about five minutes, and that's that's really all we need. So what we're going to do now is just move it to this bowl, and we're going to let the chicken just sit and cool because we're going to be shredding it later when we get ready to add it back into our soup. And you know, one of the things about chicken is that it's really easy to overcook chicken. It doesn't need, especially when it's been pounded thin like we did today, it doesn't need excessive cooking. So um, we're going to let that chicken cool and now we're going to move on with our, the rest of our uh, recipe. So what we're going to do now I'm just going to add a little bit of oil to the pan and we are going to sweat our onions and when I say sweat I mean that we're going to cook these onions until it's soft and translucent and anytime you do that we're going to add just a little bit of salt to that and what that salt does is helps draw the moisture out and sweating is, is really it's just like a human when you, when you get hot, you sweat, and it helps to cool you down, but it releases moisture. And that's what's happening with the onions when you, when you sweat them. And what that does is break down the cell walls, and that causes them to be so sweet. So this is a step that you want to make sure you do. And we're going we're gonna to do this on a, a medium-low heat because we really do want to get these onions nice and nice and soft. And uh, I say translucent, you know, a lot of times you'll do this with other vegetables as well. You can't see them becoming translucent, but you can tell it in your onions. So we just want to cook and stir pretty frequently for a few minutes. And this process of cooking these onions it's not just to, to get color on them, it's not just to brown them, but it's actually to develop flavors. It's really important to understand that that's what you're doing when you're sweating onions, is you're, you are developing, you're developing flavor. You're not just frying onions. So, we've got our onions sweated, and now let's stick our garlic in. And I'm gonna use probably, I've got two large cloves here. I'm going to use half of that, or maybe a little bit more than half of that. We'll add our garlic, and now we can turn our heat back up a little bit. Finish cooking those. And I've got some jalapenos. So we're going to add probably eh, a teaspoon of the jalapenos, because you never know how, uh, how spicy they are especially the ones that we get here in France. A lot of times they are just, they just have no heat to them whatsoever. And then sometimes they're incredibly hot. Okay, once we put our onions and our garlic in, now we can add our cilantro stems. To this mix. And wow, what an incredible aroma is coming from this, this pot. All right, once everything is nice and soft, all your vegetables are nice and soft, we are now going to add our tomato paste. So one, two nice squeezes. And when you add the tomato paste, you wanna make sure that you let that cook for about a minute. You wanna stir it in 
and you know adding tomato paste is kind of like adding flour when you're making a roux like adding flour to butter you want to make sure you cook out the rawness so we'll stir that around for just a couple of minutes and it's actually at this point that I like to go ahead and do a little a little seasoning we've 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 already seasoned our chicken uh, but right after this, we're going to be uh, adding our tomatoes and our, our chicken and our chicken stock. So this is a good time to go ahead and get a nice base of seasoning. So I'm just adding some, some cumin powder, some chili powder. And if you wanted to add a little smoked paprika, you could certainly do that at this point. And we added just a little bit of salt to this as well. Okay, this is looking fantastic. All right, so now what we're going to do is just add our tomatoes in. And our chicken stock. Okay, so just getting our chicken shredded while that stock and our tomatoes are coming up to temperature. And of course, I, I, have, I kind of have it as best as fingers, but if you need to use you know, a fork to do this part, you can certainly do that as well. All right, while I was shredding the chicken, I had a chance to just kind of sneak a little taste, and I noticed that it was really undersalted, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more salt to my chicken. And in the meantime, our, uh, our soup is coming to the, I don't want it to come to the boil. It's just, just coming, just, just getting really, really hot, just below a boil. And now we can go ahead and put our chicken back in. Remember, we undercooked this chicken from the beginning, and, uh, but it's, it's, it's literally, you know, probably five minutes away from, being, away from being cooked. So, as a matter of fact, we could probably add a little, I, I put a, a liter of chicken stock in here. I can probably go ahead and put another half liter, another, another two cups at least. Okay, all of our chicken is in, and I went ahead and added a little bit of uh, chicken stock to this. So let's just give it a taste. Oh man, oh, it's fantastic. It's got, you can, you can taste a little bit of the, of the jalapenos. Not a lot, <clears throat> it's enough that you know that they're there. And um, it's, it's really well seasoned. So now we're just gonna bring this up to a slight boil and then we'll turn it down and let it simmer for a little bit. It'll be done. In the meantime, I've got some oil heating up for our tortilla strips. And I'm just gonna put one in just to make sure it's not too hot. It's been heating for a little bit, so. And what you're looking for when you put your, your tortilla strips in is you want, you want to see little bubbles forming around the, around the tortilla strips. So that's what we have. And we don't want to crowd the pot. We just want to cook them, cook them gently for a few minutes. And now I've got ready a a pan lined with, uh, with paper towels, because as soon as these are ready, we'll take them out, put them on some paper towel, and then we will sprinkle them with some sea salt, some fine sea salt. Our soup is coming along very well back here. Now these tortilla strips, you don't want them to just blow up as soon as you put them in, but you do want the, the oil hot enough. It's kind of like if you triple tr fry, or if, or if you double fry your french fries, potatoes, you want that oil to be uh, about the temperature of that first frying, about 170 degrees uh, centigrade or about uh, 325 Fahrenheit, or 350, 350 Fahrenheit. And we just want to let them fry until we get a little bit of color on them. And I'm just, I'm moving them around fairly often so that they don't get, they don't get uh, stuck in one place. All right, and just continuing to move them around. 
And these guys, as soon as they start turning color, they will, they will, they will turn quickly. So as soon as they start turning, you want to go ahead and take them out. And we're just going to, from very high above, we're going to sprinkle them with some fine sea salt. And just toss them around a little bit. All right, and we're ready for the next batch. And I think we can just go ahead and put the rest of our tortilla strips in. And we should be good to go. All right, and so now our tortilla strips have come out, and this is what they look like once they've, once they've cooked, and they, they might get nice and crispy. Mmm. And absolutely delicious. So we'll take these out, and they are ready to go. Our soup is just about ready. And again, we really haven't boiled this at all. We've just brought it to a nice simmer. We do one final check for seasoning. I added just a little bit of salt. Let's just taste our, taste our broth. Mm. All right, we are just about there. And now, just as soon as this starts coming to the boil, it is, it's ready. Our chicken is cooked and our tomatoes have broken down and, and there's our, our chicken. So we are good to go. We'll turn this off and we'll make our garnish. One last thing that I forgot to mention is our corn. And you can use, you know, fresh corn, you can use frozen corn, you could use canned corn, whatever you want. Just at the last minute, toss that in. And it's a wonderful addition to this soup. And you know, you could use, you know, you could add other vegetables if you like. You could add zucchini, whatever, whatever you want. It's, it's your soup. So uh, we're, just, we're just going pretty, pretty classic here. So lid on and we'll just let that sit until we prepare our garnish. To finish our soup, we're gonna garnish it with a little pico de gallo. And I know you could use, you know, you could use salsa or s something like that for this. But I think, you know, since you've got a, it's a wet soup and it's uh, liquidy, I just think a nice chunky pico de gallo is the ticket. So we are just going to make that. And for the pico de gallo, we've got some tomato and our jalapenos. I'm just gonna put a few of those in there. And our garlic. And since we're using, this is, this is all gonna be fresh. We're not, um, you know, cooking this. I'm gonna take it easy on the garlic. And our fresh cilantro. And that may be all we need for our cilantro. We'll put those in there. And this is just wonderfully fresh. All right, so just to finish our uh, pico de gallo, I'm just gonna add a little, just a touch of olive oil to this. Just a l very little bit. And let's season it with a little bit of sea salt. And fresh squeeze of black pepper, just like that. And a little squeeze of fresh lemon juice. We don't want to put too much because we don't want it to start breaking down too, too soon and too much. And that's it for our pico de gallo. Let's just give it a, let's just give it a taste. Mmm, wonderfully fresh, vibrant. The lime, the lime juice just brings it up a notch in terms of brightness. It's just fantastic. It'll just go great. 
with our chicken tortilla soup. Our final touch with our soup is go going to be our avocado. All right, so for our avocado, we just, I just use, like to cut it in half long ways with a nice sharp knife and just twist it. And just with your knife, just right in the, in the center where the seed is, just hit it and it comes out just like that. And we just use a spoon to take that avocado out. Very nice. Just like that. And just some nice slices of our avocado. And those are set. And now always with fresh avocado, they turn to oxidize quickly as soon as the air, they hit the air. So we are just gonna squeeze some fresh lime juice over those to prevent the uh, oxidation and turning colors. Okay, it is that time. And, you know, I do like the, I like the chicken and all the chunks, but I just love the broth in this soup. Fantastic. And now, what we want to do is we can just do a little bit of garnishing. Put some of our tortilla strips in, just like that. A little bit of our cheese. And a little pico de gallo right there on top. And then we'll finish it with a little extra cilantro leaf. And we'll do a little squeeze of lime juice just for good measure. And let's not forget our beautiful avocado. Just like that. And there we have it, your very own homemade chicken tortilla soup. And that you can put whatever spin you would like to put on it. We have uh, finished this with some some shredded cheese, we've got some tortilla strips that we've just just uh, fried, and we've got some pico de gallo, fresh pico de gallo, and some fresh avocado. Let's give it a try. I'm just gonna try the, uh, the broth first. Mm. Oh man, incredible depth of flavor. It's just, um, just, it's, it's just got everything. It's got the, you can taste the tomatoes in it. You can taste the, the spices in it. And especially if you, if you love cilantro like I do, that's a wonderful flavor. Let's grab a little bit of the chicken. Mmm. Fantastic. And the chicken has been well seasoned and marinated and that flavor just really carries through. And today we are serving this with, what else other than a Tex-Mex favorite, a homemade margarita. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you'll make this soup because it is so easy and just so fast and it's just so delicious. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe over here in the right corner. Hit that subscribe button and just ring that bell so that you get notified every time we release a new video. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.